totally and brutally honest here. Sean Corbin makes Valerie Brudov look like Ivan Drago. It's as simple as that. He's beat what's in front of him tonight. He faces me. He's gonna visit mental demons again. And let's get let's get something straight. Come to me, mate. You come to me. Next time, ain't no judges gonna be needed. I'm gonna do worse than Kovalev. I am gonna do worse than Kovalev. Saturday night, mate, you better hold it together. I'm gonna smash it near you to pieces, mate. I'm gonna hit him. When he gets in the ring and we get 10 ounce gloves on, I'm gonna smash his head to bits. I'm gonna do it November the 30th against all odds. No matter what people say, the journalists write what you want. All as I'll say is tune back in and then look at me on December the 1st when I am world champion. It's as simple as that. I'm willing to die in that ring. It's as simple as that. I am willing to die. I'm willing to die, Zappy. Is he? You fucking rat! Value of the weeks then for episode 396. Let's have a look what we've got here then, shall we? I forgot to upload them, so I'm frantically uploading them right now. If I miss anything, you can jump in and let me know. First one here, while I get rid of the comment on the screen, comes from, uh, that's Bolo Young, 78, regular listener. Shout out to him. Eddie Hearn, let's go. Billy Joe Saunders versus Martin Murray for the WBO title live on Sky Sports. We talked about that one earlier, didn't we? No need to really go into let's that. Oh, let's go. Let's go to Who knows, doesn't he, Eddie? He knows what he's Fuck. doing. Yeah, I know, man. He's, he's doing it, but he's, 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 he's flogging a dead horse, man. Really is flogging a dead horse. Talking about flogging a dead horse, what about flogging a dead fleece? <laughs> Clever sit all by popular demand, Dan Raphael, Andy, has released the hashtag fleece. Now, I'm blocked from Dan, but somebody shared, sent me a screenshot. What do you think about this, then? Yeah, I mean, I think, uh, just looking at that, I think Rob might be the only person that's not blocked on that account, actually. But, um, yeah, it's a sensational piece of boxing history, the memorabilia and that, you know... You could buy it as a as a quilt for your wife or something like that. I don't know. You, know, you, you know. could fit about three wives in there, couldn't you? <laughs> say, for the poly polygamous community. <laughs> you could fit a family. It's more of a tent, isn't it, or something like yeah. that. Please. A harp, a hammock. <laughs> <laughs> do, you reckon he, do you think now he's left ESP and he's trying to build bridges with like the ones that have abused him all the time, so he's going to tweet out things like this, so... He's just randomly put by popular demand. I mean, I, ge I genuinely don't believe people have been tweeting him saying, can we see the fleece? Can we see the fleece? Um, maybe he's just thought, yeah, let, let's try and build some bridges. And he's what, just... what about scratch and sniff, Ozzy? Like oh. a virtual fleece? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, man, can you imagine him just like when he, when he, when he like wipes the ooze out his belly button or the cracks he tap his arse and stuff like that, man? Pure filth. Pure fucking filth. And he, 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 the Hinkty, the he's actually had the push of sitting next to a raging babe at a, at a boxing event. But his fucking mind went some places. I bet it was raging, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Not Smido raging either. <laughs> I see. He's worked for a boxing scene now, eh? So. Oh, dear. Yes, uh, good luck to probably Dan Raphael. <laughs> probably got Steve Kim's leftover job, you know. <laughs> Steve Kim's leftover food. Uh, Billy Nelson, my prediction is Lewis Ritson will win a world title at the end of the year. Luke says, really? Does he beat Taylor or Progre for you, Billy? Weirdly. I think he has more success against Progre than he did Vasquez due to styles. <laughs> but I still think Progre would have far too much for him. Billy says, I think given another couple of fights, he could progress a good scrap. Gary Kavanagh nominating that whole conversation for a belly of the week. As I said before, I wouldn't be surprised if Lewis Ritson did win a world title because the bar has been... Uh, drag so low, so there you go. Uh, so Ruiz Hauser Fitzgerald has uh, jumped in with Mark Williams asking about Barry Hearn with his links to Jeffrey Epstein. Mark Williams wasn't yeah. biting. You're not interested, said Fitzgerald, refusing to say why he had one of his phone numbers. Blah blah blah. Mark Williams said, No, I'm, de I'm definitely not interested. <laughs> Terence Douglas nominated that conversation for Belly of the Week. Uh, what about this one then, Andy? Joe Gallagher says, Love to see 15 rounds brought back to world title fights. Franny Fit 55 nominated Joe but what about 15 rounders you could see why Joe his fighters yeah. don't get going until about round 9 do they say it would suit him yeah I suppose left hook to the body left hook upstairs you know always a left hook to the body though um, I've listened shout out to Joe Gallagher about for that interview he did in the IFL with uh, Andy McCartan that was uh, it was quality it was uh, it was not give a fuck to her interview in it was it was genuinely good stuff he's naming names you know fucking fair play to him um, yeah, I just own that. I mean, he's got a point. 15 rounds and that. Okay, I get it. Safety and all that sort of stuff again and that. But it weeds out the best for the best. It really does because uh, they, they last three rounds is just something else, man. Like you just, you just, you've seen it before. You've just seen fighters that, like, say, 
So I think maybe Amir Khan against uh, Maidana, for example. You know, if that had been 15 rounds, would they have survived? Who knows? He was hurt yeah. bad in that 10th round. You just don't know. But aye, it would yeah, be, no, be great to survived. No way he would have survived. Khan would have been knocked out if that was 15 yeah. rounds. So as I'm saying, it, it's, it breaks... And all these days as well, like, they're so in such good physical shape to go 15 rounds would be gr more grueling, maybe, I think. I don't know, like, well, I think that's, uh, they're so much faster and stronger and stuff over 15 rounds and we could, too, could be too much damage to be taken. Like. Can you Not Oath the Jones, he can barely go 15 minutes. <laughs> can you imagine, like, so like, maybe Fury Wilder won going 15 rounds? Uh, like, Fury that's what it would have needed, though, wouldn't it? Would have needed yeah. those extra three rounds. Exactly. You wouldn't need the rematch. You would not have needed that rematch, that I believe, because Fury came back and won that round just about. But would Wilder have come out in that thirteen, thinking to himself, "I fucking had you out. I had you out. Surely, fuck." Would he then be doubting himself in that? Would Fury then start pressing it, or would Wilder catch him again and Fury just wouldn't they recover at all? And that you know, you just you wouldn't believe you believe it wouldn't be a rematch that required there for that fifteen rounder like. Well, I watched the, the rematch last night when I should have been watching the other cards. Um, and I'll tell you what, like I can understand why they're not wanting this third Wilder fight because he really disregarded head movement and everything. Like, and he did ship a couple of punches and we rolled him and all that. Like, but how many chances do you want to give Wilder to knock you out? Well, you'd already had 19 rounds. Like, you want another 10 rounds with him where he could just drop the fucking atomic bomb at any time, even though he's out of the fight. So it's a no win for them. Like, I'm glad they're moving past the But Frank didn't seem as confident last night on, on Teddy that, um, that it was uh, a done deal that this this wilder fight is not going to happen so I, I don't think they've given up on their side so we're, we're amazed to be seeing what's going to happen there i i called a while back and i thought they could dump the wbc they could just go straight to joshua let's get it on indeed no 15 rounders yet though uh, despite joe gallagher calling out for it uh, connor ben just read one in two people uh, we'll get cancer in a lifetime for blah, blah, blah. Uh, MJ Ferguson, 91, nominating Connor there for getting stuck into world affairs. What about this one then, Andy? WBC oh. on Family Feud. Uh, let's have a look there. We've got Ryan Garcia, is that? We've got Evander Holyfield. <laughs> Riddick Bo standing up straight, which is always a bonus. <laughs> Suleiman <laughs> and Sean Porter. I wonder, I wonder if Riddick Bo put his belt back in the bin, by the way. <laughs> Yeah. Family feud, fucking hell. Mate. Maurice Suleiman, I bet you would demand an apology. You, you, you threw my belt in the bin. The dawn is not happy. Fuck. He should have gone fishing in the bin. He might have found this fellow in there. Evander <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. looks like he works at Dunder and Mifflin. <laughs> Good old Evander. Did Can we have an Evander one? We had an Evander one this week, didn't we, Andy? Um, no video you got. Hang on, I think. No, I've... it was. I was the clip. I it was about. Uh, you know, remember the uh, the Ryan Garcia putrid fucking promo for the Campbell fight, mm -hmm. and uh, so, someone kind of you know put the two of them together in that way. Uh, Tyson against Holyfield. There was no shit talk back in the end days. Like Holyfield just says, "Look, I'm deserving this fight." Or something along with like, "I'm deserving this fight and stuff like that." It says, "I come to win. I come to fight. I'll see you next Saturday." And Tyson's like, I cannot fucking wait for you, baby. I'm going to enjoy this. Right? And then you've got you've got Ryan Garcia with his fucking shirt on, his fucking medallion where it is touching his body, and he's giving it this fucking cringe about, I'm going to make Campbell soup of him. And he pulls out this fucking can of soup that he's obviously been paid to fucking promote on his interview and stuff like that. He just, just cha-ching, just like total fucking pish. Right? No charisma whatsoever, stuff like that. Just pish. Just... Just absolute fucking pish, that's all I can say. Just, what are we net? So sort of, we feed, we fucking fud. Just, I hope Campbell sparks him, by the way. But it's like, at this point, you've got Lopez coming in on that as well. You've got Virgil Ortiz. It's like, a, there is a, there's a takeover happening here. And I didn't mind like of Lopez and Ortiz breaking through and that, but this wanker I've got an issue with because he just babes in fucking tears and I want to see him bathe in tears once fucking Luke Campbell knocks him out. I hope he does it. I really do hope he does it. And he's right. Times have certainly changed. I'm a winner. And I come to win, and there's no doubt about it. And I look forward to being the heavyweight champ of the world. And the only thing that's stopping me being the champ is just time. See you November the 9th. Thank you. Uh, 
Tyson. Thank you very much. You um, got nothing coming, man. got nothing. Nothing coming. I'm going to like this. I'm going to have a good time this fight. <laughs> you could just see it here. Oh. Well, he had something coming, but not what he was expecting. I was so fight up, by the way. Jesus Christ. How how that ended, that first fight, was tremendous, man. Tyson, oh, yeah, it was just a great fight. You know, he got his, he, he got his beating that night, like, but I'll tell you what, he took it like a fucking proper badass. He did. And in the rematch, had the air bitten yeah. off. Um, let's have a look then. Uh, back to the Martin Murray Billy Joe Saunders situation, a situation everybody wants to get back stuck in on uh, New Age Boxing UK. So, can you explain to me, WBO, how in August 2020, Martin Murray wasn't in your top 15, and in September 2020, he was ranked 12th? What happened in that month to miraculously springboard him above 13, 14, 15 and from Munro to drop out? Love to know, chaps. This could be the same Bermuda Triangle that saw uh, got a load of guys jump out, Andy, when BJ Flores <laughs> got catapulted into the WBC top 15 to, to Face Tony, it, it happens, you know. Well, I, I, I know exa- I know the answer to this, mate, and I'm, I'm disappointed you came to me first because I probably get a suit here with this. But I guess just just listen hypothetically. I'm not saying this is true, but it's close to it probably. I can sense there's something Manila, and I suggest it's probably about six inches thick. What <laughs> inside? What's inside that? I have no idea, but you get my drift. Absolutely. Something brown and six inches thick has been slid in a certain direction, possibly. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Jeffrey Epstein's education. <laughs> 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 thank, thank God he's dead. <laughs> Go ahead, Rob. I'm to say on that one. Oh dear. Um, who have we got here? Chip, I can't see because of the Facebook likes in the way. It's something dog in society. Anyone else think that Billy Joe Saunders is a good outside bet for sports personality of the year? Uh, William McNamara has nominated him for that one. Also, Brian O'Blake has um, made everybody aware of this Floyd Mayweather Jr. Ring Magazine Championship belt, which is for sale, reduced from $499 to $299.99. It's heavy and it's beautiful. So this is when Floyd won the World Heavyweight Championship. He was awarded the Ring Magazine belt. Uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr., absolutely 100% authentic, Andy. Seems legit, says Brian O'Blake. You, uh, you wouldn't, you'd like to get your hands on that, wouldn't you? Well, without doubt, mate. Without doubt. Uh, how much was that again? Three hundred dollars. Yeah, legit. a bit of authentic history for you there. Yeah, legit. I mean, yeah, without doubt. You know, I, I would, I would probably make an investment on that tenfold in about twenty years, and that when Floyd finally kicks the bucket, you know, when he if comes back it, and fights a heavyweight. Yeah, I basically, I. If you buy it, you get a free quote on double glazing. <laughs> <laughs> it could be a smart investment, Rob. <laughs> You're a hell of a fighter, Steve. <laughs> Selling his Lambo to Santa Cruz and that. But that was a good business move by Santa Cruz. Only Floyd would buy a Lamborghini brand new. And Santa Cruz comes along, smart businessman probably, buys it second hand for like what, what, half the price probably. Well done, me man. Well done. Absolutely. Santa Cruz has made some money out of the sport. A few flying in on Twitter. I'll just get to these as and when. Uh, obviously, LF Doom, a few of the other boys are thrown in this from Hawk, £347. Christopher Lovejoy, he's not training whatsoever. <laughs> Why would you even bother, I suppose, is the, is the question. Another one sent to me here as well. Uh, Kel Brook, I am, I'm not going to be able to play this one, unfortunately, but he's coming, he's, Kel, he's coming hard in this fight with uh, <laughs> Terence Crawford. So good luck to him in that one. Uh, any other nominations from you, gentlemen, Andy? You're unmuted. Anything from you? Yeah, well, just like the... Um, I'll read it. Ron Lewis's tweet, actually, about Christopher Lovejoy. So he says, Fascinating looking into the record of Christopher Lovejoy. Dave Allen's next opponent, 19-0, 19 knockouts, 17 in the first round. He was never boxed outside Tijuana. He scaled nearly 23 uh, stone in his second fight, and one of his wins, the 13th, was over a guy who'd boxed at featherweight. Right? There's, I said, the talks on the street, like, do not go near this fight in a betting sense, by the way. You'll get fuck all on it. It'll be interesting. Ozzy, what is the odds for this fight? You got an angle for it yet, mate? What's this for? Dave Allen's fight. What is, you got any oh, odds for it yet? Uh, yeah, let me let me have a look now. I, no worries. Um, so, obviously, yeah, it's got coming it, out. I've got it. Okay, fire away. Well, Dave Allen is 1-5 to five to win. Uh, and Christopher Lovejoy is 3-1 to one to win. Uh, let me see if there's a oh, there's, there's no knockout uh, other markets yet, but it's rare I say back Dave Allen, but this week next weekend, fucking do it because fucking as you you perfectly summed him up, Andy. 
Mr. Fucking Blobby is going to have no chance in beating David Allen. Heavy bag. It'd be funny if he knocked him out, wouldn't he? Oh, <laughs> it. Imagine, yeah, fucking it, it, 350 pound man. I'm, I, hey, listen, if he's fought a featherweight, I, I'm excited to see what he's going to look like. By the way, I mean, he's going to be like like so far, like you know, he's, he's like fat and he's got like one arm longer than the other and stuff like that. Is it going to be that bad? <laughs> Is it really going to be that bad? Oh, by the way, I did. I had the opportunity to watch Prince Patel's fight against Innocent Everest. Um, Steve had the response back for Innocent. We're going to get him on yeah. the podcast hopefully at some point. But uh, uh, yeah, Pat- Patel looked like a fucking onion by the way with that hairdo that he had and stuff. So. Uh, Good to see him. Oh, this this tweet got deleted. I was on the throne this morning having a shit, and uh, Sky Sports had put out a tweet about the about the box office event and stuff like that. And the predictions were as follows: like Jimmy Moore's gone music on points, uh, Tasha Jonas has gone music on points. So has Macklin. Uh, so has uh, Spencer Oliver. Um, Johnny Nelson actually believe is getting in line, and he's believing me. He's thinking music's going to win by stoppage. Uh, but then we get to David Hay, which is naturally he picks Chisora to win by KO within 10 rounds. And then uh, the man himself, the bomber Bellew, picks Chisora by KO. <laughs> and the tweet was eventually deleted. So I've not seen it being retweeted back. So uh, that's what I've got for this week. Stop it! Stop, stop, stop the fake news! Stop! Ozzy, any nominations from you? No, I, I, I don't. I'm, I'm assuming fucking uh, Chippy Tits, Christopher Lovejoy, has certainly been nominated for uh, his existing. <laughs> well, yeah, that and putting on 110 pounds since January 2020. Um, talk about fighting shape. Yep, yeah, fair play to him. That is some effort. Um, and yeah, the bomber picking Chisora to win by stoppage. It's a shame, Aussie, they couldn't have bought over that big fat mess from New Zealand. You remember Conrad Lamb? He was like five hundred and forty-seven pounds or something. Oh, okay, now. <laughs> what was it, Conrad Lamb? <laughs> Conrad Lamb. Oh dear, good old Conrad man. They should have oh, bought him man. over. Jesus Christ! Look at the size of him. Him oh, against yeah, Christopher yeah. Lovejoy with Terry yeah, referee. Yeah, I remember him. Yeah. There was also that fat slob that came over that um, who boxed. I think it was Fabio Wardley, and he was like three hundred and thirty pounds. Dennis Lewandowski, yeah, yeah, Dennis Lewandowski, yeah. Uh, they just saw a picture of him on what's it called on um, on his box wreck, and he was in fairly decent shape. And then clearly, it'd been on the uh, Christopher Lovejoy diet and rocked up, and he was three hundred and fifty-two pounds at the weigh in. £352, that is absurd. Fuck Who's me. that other lad, Ignacio Espada as well? Is, you see, he you fought so him? far as well, guys, eh? He fought so Who's far, that? Eh? This, guy, this guy that's fighting uh, Dave Allen. No, no, no. no, no. I, I said so far I beat him. Oh, All right, sorry, sorry, I must have. I've seen some, I've seen some bag work. Um, and what's it called? Um, I forget who his trainer was. And his trainer was telling him how to throw a right hand. Because <laughs> he couldn't throw a right hand. Seriously, he couldn't throw a straight right, and he made him kept doing it. He said, "No, that's not straight. You've got to do it again. No, that's not straight. He couldn't do it." But so it just this like, guy is not going to do anything. So was he not turning it over, like, or just like, just like throwing like a like, slap him right hand and that no kind of like extend? Yeah, he was, wasn't turning it over. Couldn't throw it straight. He kept coming like as a bit of a hook type of thing. I'm try. I'll try and find the video. I just caught it before on Twitter. Well, anyway, it's funny you should say that. I remember years ago, whenever Malik Scott was coming through as a prospect, I don't know if you remember, but Scott had about 40 fights before he actually beat anybody of any note, and then he became a bit of a journeyman. But I remember him fighting on an undercard in America one Sunday, and Sky Sports picked up picked up the show. And Jim Watt was going mad at Scott all through this eight-rounder or ten-rounder, saying how, amateur, how novice like he was, because he couldn't turn his right hand over. Like you just said, he wasn't able to throw a proper right hand. Jim, Jim Watt was <laughs> exasperated about this. Well, that's what I'm saying. I mean, Jim had his faults now, but as I say, I was listening back to a couple of old fights that Jim was actually commentating on. He actually kind of called it true. I think it was a, well, it was a Scouse lad. He was fighting for a world title. Um, I forget who it was against. Um, I mentioned it a couple of weeks ago. But he, he kind of called it straight and stuff. And he said, if he noticed something in a fight 
that he wasn't really doing well and that he would, he would pick out in it. And I suppose maybe it doesn't fit with the narrative these days and that, but we kind of like miss that bit of honesty and that. And, you know, a bit like Polly and that, you know, Polly's a really good job at kind of breaking down, you know, a fighter's mistakes and what he should be doing better and that. Um, but Jim actually kind of like called out kind of brutally in that as well. Obviously kind of working alongside the, the was it Carpenter or I forget it was him or Gutteridge and that. Gutteridge, yeah. Gutteridge, aye. Um, yeah, he, he kind of called it as he seen it. But she's, uh, she's, there you are. It's what you want, you know. Tell you what, Malik Scott's right hand has improved a lot since he got the OnlyFans. Oh, I'm going to say. <laughs> it's been going to places you would have never expected. Is he doing live porn with his missus, eh? <laughs> I want to say, yeah. I don't is listen it? to all kind of fights. I don't think I can take it that far to a subscription. Fucking hell, we can't. The fellas paying for that instead of jumping into Patreon. Shut up, Donald, before you start. Which is, is, he, is he, honestly, is he actually raw dog and her only fans, eh? Oh, uh, yeah. Fucking hell. Yeah, he is, yeah, yeah. I thought everyone knew that. Yeah, Malik Spar has, uh, has an only fans with him and the missus. <laughs> Absolutely. He's on there, Andy. And that other fella, who's the other Tyler Good John and uh, Yusuf Max Tenedo, on there. Uh, it's all catered for, yeah. I've seen Tornado Taylor on that, but I, I, I have to see Malik putting his content. I've seen Taylor putting his content out. I've not seen, uh, I've not seen uh, the big man himself. Putting, oh, uh, I Get on it, absolutely. Uh, Dominic, any belly of the week nominations from you? No, none from me, Steve. Nothing from Dominic this week. Uh, rapping Rob Kelly, you're always good for one or two. Anything for us? Could it be Floyd? Well, it has to be Floyd this week. Like, who would say that? Like, I'm a father figure. <laughs> I'm like a big brother. No, I'm like a father figure to him, even though I was training Devin Haney last week for spite. Uh, <laughs> just, he's just deplorable. Like, he's the absolute. But even the thumbnail for the Showtime thing, I haven't watched it yet, but even the thumbnail has Floyd Mayweather sitting beside Javante. It like, has to be about him. When he's playing. You know, the projects. Exactly, exactly, on his plane. Oh, my God. But there's a lot about him, how insecure he is when you see Broner tell a story about how he had to get away from him. Like, he tried to kidnap Broner, keep him in Vegas, kept paying for his friends' hotels and all, so he wouldn't leave. And then eventually he just took a flight and ducked out because he couldn't live anymore. Like, so, yeah, Floyd this week in a quiet week. Quite a quiet week, Andy. I'm I'm torn here. I like Bellew, uh, as I always like going for Bellew, but Christopher Love, Lovejoy has slid in unnoticed yeah, with his, no his tiny given. frame. What do you think? No foot's given, eh? What is it? £347, just yeah. to reiterate that. Where, where does Dave Allen normally weigh in it? I know he's not in great shape sometimes, but what's his general weight? Or is it 240? Hit, I'm not sure. He's hit and miss, isn't he? 240, 250. I'm being generous. Uh, what's he coming out? He usually wants to come in about 18 stone. He was 262 against Dorian Darch. Um, and he was 241 against Price and said he was too light. So, yeah, maybe around 250. 250. 250. So he says it's it all almost 100 pounds. Yeah, he's between 90 and 100 pounds. Lauren, from the base, that uh, being the king of spin, I saw some IFL where he was saying, like, um, Oh, everyone's giving me stick because I want pay per views. But I've been brought into pay per views to lose. Well, not to let Roy Thomas, you weren't like you were supposed to win that one, except you're <laughs> hitting around all day in the hotel hobby. Like, don't be do you know what I mean? He's brilliant at getting the public on side. Like, he's actually quite true um, as a businessman because he keeps getting these opportunities. What, he, what he's doing to him is it hell wise? I don't know. Like, it remains to be seen with Christopher Lovejoy being able to make any kind of impact. A three to one, I think they're quite short, short odds there. Um, but Ben asked us to give a shout as well to say that uh, we did the interview with Tyan Booth uh, for Boxer News TV this week in depth uh, with Tyan Booth. So, yeah, cheers for that. I just came up with that myself there. Now, so, um, That's good stuff yeah, there. Well, well done. Cheers, Steve. Thanks, man. No problem. I'll tell you what, though, Rob, you make an interesting point there. Dave Allen has made people care. Whenever Hammer Hamer fell out, of, you know, pulled out of the fight or whatever, because he got the old Rona, people were on Twitter going, like, speculating on who Allen should fight. You know, oh yeah, we should. We want to see Lenroy Thomas part three. Somebody said they're actually calling for this, Rob. Yeah, it's it's he's 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 doing what he's, he's supposed to do, keep himself in the public eye. He has that kind of Archbishop of Banterbury type of um, program, you know, this kind of. You know, the you're banner juice. Yeah, they love all that, like, don't they? So he keeps himself relevant like that. Like, well, he's not, he's not, he's not, oh, late he's entry. Oh. Late entry. Eddie Hearn. He's making the. He's seen he's been getting a lot of requests to do uh, 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 the, his book release in audio <laughs> in audio format. Guess who's? Guess who did the audio? 
Who? <laughs> Eddie. It's got to be himself, <laughs> hasn't it? Of course it had to be. <laughs> of course. Can you imagine him sitting there reading his own book on a fucking tape recorder? <laughs> yeah, there you go, boys. <laughs> Honestly, God. you got to love him, out not you? Know, on Twitter, all the retweets. He's too he's tight. He's too tight. You've not got a voice actor to do the book for him. Yeah, he made him up there and listen to Eddie's audio book. If he can do it, anyone can. Well, <laughs> probably heard you die. Have a good shot. I'm just saying that. Mention that in the booklet. Steve Elms has got seven books to his name, by the way. Uh, nine. Eddie's only got one. Nine, sorry. <laughs> Eddie's only got one. Who the fuck is Eddie Hearn, by the way? <laughs> I still can't get over the Archbishop of Banterbury. I like that one, Rob. That was a good yeah. one. <laughs> Leo Banta Cruz, Andy, perhaps? What about that? Uh, maybe not. <laughs> Leo Santa Cruz Control. Neo Fimo Lopez, because he solved the Matrix. <laughs> Neo Fimo. <laughs> anyway, we've gone off, oh, to, off yeah, topic. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lamachenko this week with the shoulder injury. I don't know if he's injured or not, but I want to hear all that shit now, right? Yeah, I'm the same. I'm the same because he, he, he said it himself, actually, in the pre fight, that he was 100% healthy for his fight. And now we're here, mate. He was actually injured, granted, and stuff like that. And he's in surgery, and that. Oh, look, come on, come on. Lopez, I knew this was going to happen. I fucking knew this was going to happen. Lopez reminded me of um, the Cameron Basilio story there, where he said that he went approach Sugar Ray, and Sugar Ray brushed him off, and that was what gave him motivation. He said that happened with Lomachenko early, but then after the fight, he went over and said, you know, good fight, thanks for the opportunity, whatever. Like, um, he said Lomachenko scoffed at him, and then it's not, we saw him standing there. The ring. I thought that might have been COVID thing, protocol, but. Apparently, like he took it like a diva, so he lost the fight. Like fucking, he lost the fight. That's it. He showed a bit of gra- uh, be gracious in defeat where for a fellow with a record like him. I thought that was very poor for. Him. Like a nomination for Loma. Right, I'm going for Tandy. I'm going for big fat love joy. Who are you going for? Yeah, I've got to go for love joy as well, man. That's, that's a no fucks given. He's coming over here. He's not even training according to uh, Tim O'Hawk on the on Twitter and that. So. Uh, yeah, 347 pounds coming to that ring, baby. Pay-per-view. Make sure you don't sign up for it. Don't press that red button. Hit Team Stream all the way. Absolutely, Team Stream. Ozzy, who are you going for this week? Belly of the Week, episode 396. Oh, Christopher Lovejoy, without a doubt. No training. He might be trying to put on an extra £10 before he gets in the ring on Saturday night. You know, he's probably in that hotel room now. Apple pie, cream, just drinking cream by the gallon type of thing, you know, anything to get the weight on. Usually boxers want the weight off, but in Lovejoy's case, he wants the weight on. (laughs) (laughs) More weight gained than weight drained, Dominic, who are you going for this week? Exactly, because, um, you know, I was just watching the news this morning, sir, there's Steve and you, Aussie's talking about cream and all that sort of stuff, but the, the oldest person in the uk died yesterday at like 112 or something and she said before she died that butter and cream were the secrets to her um to her longevity so i don't blame the guy but i ain't going for floyd um it, it was it was one time during that the showtime thing as well he he said it's not it's not pay-per-view it's may per view and you're just like oh, just it's just He's just insufferable, so he is. He's just a oh, great fighter, but similar. I wouldn't say he's he's worse than Ray Leonard. But he's just similar. They're both great fighters, probably two of the best of the last, you know, however long you want to go back. But they're both both their personalities are just um, something creepy about it. Like some sort of oh, it's just just puts you up, like. That's a really interesting comment from Dominic there, actually. I was watching, as you do on YouTube during the week, James Buster Douglas against Oliver McCall. And who should be on the commentary alongside Jim Lampley and Larry Merchant? But Sugar Ray Leonard, and I couldn't hear a bloody word he was saying. He was speaking so quietly, I could barely hear what he was saying. So creepy comes to mind. Great fighter that he was. One for Mayweather, three for Lovejoy, Rob. I don't think you can make much of a difference here, but we're interested to see who you've got anyway. Yeah, I think Floyd this week, like, just has to be about him. Kind of cannot stop talking about himself. I'd say he bores all those people the debt that are on his payroll listening to him. I bet they'll talk behind his back and everything. It's going to be awful for him when he finds out. Close for Floyd. He's come second, though, for once in his uh, whole boxing career to Christopher Lovejoy, the uh, £350, hopefully, plus heavyweight, come Saturday night. You can hear all about Lovejoy's performance or lack thereof against Dave Allen in our post-fight pod on October the 31st, Alexander Usyk going in against Derek Chisora. 